Hey guys, I am Dr. Anthony Gustin. And I'm Chris Irvin. And this is question number 38 of 268 of the Keto Answers book, which is a book that we just launched detailing every single answer to every single question you might have about the ketogenic diet. Yes, so this question is, how does the ketogenic diet uh, prevent hunger and cravings? Yeah, one of the biggest things about the ketogenic diet is that you're removing carbohydrates and increasing fat and hopefully keeping protein pretty high. Mm -hmm. And these macronutrients just by themselves have shown to really increase satiety. Yeah, and you know, the other thing is that since you're cutting out the carbohydrates, you're avoiding the uh, rises and falls in your blood sugar. So when we're consuming a lot of very quick digesting carbs, we get a quick increase in our blood sugar, which is usually followed by a big crash in our blood sugar, which stimulates a lot of hunger and cravings. And when we're following a keto diet, we have a much more stable blood sugar, which is going to prevent us from having a lot of those hunger and cravings. Yeah, and so sort of a simplified version of how that works works. You, know, you eat some carbohydrate source, it goes into your bloodstream, but carbohydrates and glucose, the breakdown of carbs, are actually really damaging your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. So your body goes, oh crap, let's get this stuff pushing your cells, let's, let's take care of it. So you secrete some hormones, you get it into all your cells, you can store it as fat, or you can put it into stored glycogen. Um, and then after that, you sort of have the levels of glucose in your blood go up really high and then down really, really low. When it goes down low, after your body pushes into all its cells, you know, 60, 90, 120 minutes or so after a meal, then your body goes, well, okay, well, where's all that energy source? Mm -hmm. I need some energy, what are you doing? Feed me. Mm -hmm. And so this is the common thing that people maybe have felt after, you know, a high carbohydrate lunch, this, you know, mid-afternoon uh, sugar crash. I mean, we've all done this, we've eaten candy, stuff like that, and just, you know, felt really great. Uh, but then uh, one, two hours later, felt, felt terrible. And yeah. so that, that doesn't happen on a ketogenic diet. Yeah, and you know, we also have the benefit of having ketones present in your blood when you're on the ketogenic diet. So, you know, for somebody in the same situation that he was just describing where your blood sugar crashes, you know, we a lot of people don't have the ability to tap into this endless supply of fuel in our stored fat and ketones, which you know stimulates this hunger because our body needs something to provide fuel for us to function. So when we're in a state of ketosis though, when we're not eating, we're actually producing an energy source that tells our body, hey, we have all that we need here. We don't need to stimulate hunger, which is one of the reasons why it's so easy for people who are following a ketogenic diet to be able to go, you know, so such long periods of time without eating, whereas, you know, before you're on keto, you go like two hours and you get that hangry feeling that everybody's talking about. Yeah, I mean, your body can only store, you know, 250, 300 grams of carbohydrates in it, where you have enough fat. I mean, Chris, a male model here, very lean, very, <laughs> very lean. Uh, someone like him could, it's something like can run hundreds of marathons of worth of energy on his fat that he has in his body, which is very, very low. <laughs> and so you can have all this stored fat where you can tap into that at an unlimited basis and use that for energy, where it's, it's not very effective for your body to do that with the stored 300 grams of glucose or glycogen that it has. And so that's another reason why you know, it can lead to, to more full, less hunger cravings and more fullness. Yeah, and, and even outside of that, you know, we talk a lot about like the macronutrients and, and ketosis and, all, and how all of that impacts our hunger, but there's also a lot of research that shows um, changes in our hunger hormones that allows us to be a lot more full. So this isn't just like anecdotal evidence that we're speaking about here. There's actual mechanisms that you can find in the research that shows how our bodies change and don't have the same hunger hormones being produced as you would on a higher carbohydrate diet. Yeah, and I mean, eating enough protein, eating enough fat, it's really, really hard to overeat that stuff. Yeah. And it keeps you full for just a really, really long time. Yeah. If you're looking to simplify everything you need to know about the world's most confusing diet, head on over to Amazon.com and pick up Keto Answers today. The best part about it is that you're not just getting basic information. It's almost like you're getting a tiny little version of me and Chris shrunk down, put in your pocket to answer every question you have along your way. And that's not weird. It's beneficial. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best.